What's up YouTube, Jason here with Bite My Bits. Today I'm doing just kind of a quick little video showing a, a new project that I'm working on. Uh, I actually have been doing some router reviews as of late. Uh, I've worked with TP-Link and Linksys uh, to do these router reviews. So I've given away a couple routers, but in the uh, conclusion of these reviews, I end up having uh, some extra routers. So right now I'm still using the AC uh, ACS3200 from Linksys as my daily driver for my router. I'm actually gonna be switching that to the 5400 from TP-Link as soon as I <clears throat> stop being lazy and, and program everything I need into that router to make it work for my network. But for now, it's still running as it is, just as it was, actually. Anyways, what I have right now is this Linksys 1900 ACS, the WRT 1900 ACS. And I'm actually not using this for anything right now, but I've been saving it, uh, basically keeping it in the back of my room and just saying, hey, I want to do something with that. Now, the project that I wanted to do, and it's not because I need to, but just more of a curiosity, is I wanted to, one, install DDWRT on the Linksys system. Now, uh, when I first did the review, I did state that it was a, it was open to, you know, uh, third-party software or firmware in order to, to open up your router or unlock different features or whatever you want to do with DDWRT or, you know, some tomato or whatever other options are out there. But I never actually tested that, whereas instead I just touched base on it and mentioned that it had it. So this was kind of an opportunity for me to test how easy it was in order to get DDWRT on this Linksys router. Now, I've used DDWRT before. Uh, I did it on a, uh, God, it was like a WRT54G or something like that. It's an old router that I had before. I've used it on that router before. It was super easy to install. But with this new system, I just wanted to make sure, hey, is it still as easy to install? Uh, is it user-friendly? That sort of thing. So I did test that. And then two, I wanted to set the 1900 uh, ACS up as a access point. That way it would, be, it would be an extension of the other router that's in my main living room right here. And it's somewhere about right there. So basically it'd be the same network, same name, same password, but just be an extension, just an, an access point, exactly how it is. So I wanted to get that set up. So I went over to the DDWRT website. I downloaded, I found the model number. I downloaded the software that works for my system. I uploaded the new firmware just as I would any firmware for that system. Again, super easy. Uh, once the DDWRT was flashed onto the system, it did its reboot thing. And I went into the new uh, user interface and I started making the changes that I needed to the router. Uh, or to the DDWRT software in order to turn it into basically a dummy access point. Now to get this thing to work properly, you do have to make a few changes. You have to disable the actual router function, the DHCP, you disable things like firewalls, uh, you know, all these things that are normally reserved for a router that has direct access to the outside world. This is only an access point, so you don't need any of that kind of stuff. Then you assign an IP address that's on your subnet that's gonna be like, you know, 192.168.1.2 or .50 or whatever you want, just so you know and you can remember what it is and you can access it as soon as you attach it to your actual network. After I was done with that, I went through and I initially set it as a different SSID just to do some testing, just to get it up and running, get it plugged into the network, make sure I had a distinguishable different name so I could hook up to it, make sure I was getting good speeds from it. Uh, that was more for me a testing phase just to make sure everything was working properly. Now, the one thing I do want to say right here, I don't think I actually recorded this, uh, but it was a problem that I ran into where the five gigahertz band uh, was not working after the first program and, and when I first initially said it, it initially worked, but then for some reason, about half an hour later, the little light stopped being on and it just stopped working. So I ended up having to reset the router uh, in order to get that the five gigahertz to come back on. I don't know why that was, and I haven't been able to recreate the problem. Uh, I've waited, I've actually been sitting on this for a couple days since the weekend, but the problem hasn't come back, but I just wanted to make note of that is that if you do have the 1900 ACS and for whatever reason your five gigahertz goes down, that's actually a problem that I ran into and I haven't been able to recreate it. So I don't know what caused it. Okay, so once I got everything set up and then I set up my test uh, wireless network and I connected to it, I did some speed tests and I got all that done. After I got all that done, that's when I wanted to, to basically make it an extension of my existing wireless network. So what I did is I went back into the router after I got it hooked up to my regular network 
network and I change that SS the network SSID to be the exact same as my main wireless router. And on top of that, I also made sure, of course, it was the same encryption type and then I kept the same exact password as my existing one. So basically from any kind of a mobile uh, platform or you know basic laptop without any kind of extensive tools this is going to show up as the same SSID basically the same network that's with the same settings in fact coming from you know the same brand of routers it's everything's going to be the same from a mobile you know perspective it should be the same network so the idea here is that if I'm in a different area of my house and for whatever reason if the uh, the access point has a stronger signal than my regular router which again this is all the way this is in the corner of my house like the very far this corner of my house. This is about as far as I can get. Whereas if I were to go up here all the way to the corner of that house, that's actually the spare bedroom and I never go there. But if I did go there, that's going to be the weakest point, the weakest signal point. So I can put this new access point anywhere in my house in order to get better service. And that's actually what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it in my computer room, which just happens to be right underneath the, our bathroom, our master bathroom, really close to our bedroom. I don't actually have signal issues in my bathroom or my bedroom but I'm just doing this because I can type of thing. But for now, that's kind of the best spot because it's right next to my access point. It's easy to set up, but I can just put it right there and everything's really easy. So to test this, I use the Wi-Fi roaming sweet spots uh, app, app that I use to test the TP-Link's routers, their speeds. And what that does is it communicates directly with the routers themselves. It basically transfers data back and forth and it doesn't rely on uh, the internet service in order to, to judge the speeds. Uh, so what I did is I put it on my nightstand uh, in my main bedroom, which is pretty much almost directly above this, uh, where the router is now. And I tested it with the old network. And then I retested it after I got everything set up with the new network. And I did see some improvements on speed. The only downside that I can find, and I personally don't have a lot of experience with, I did a lot of research, can't really find the answers that I want. I do. I did find some of the answers that I think are correct, but either way, uh, something called Wi-Fi roaming, where a mobile device will switch or be handed off seamlessly to another access point and allow you to, you know, be basically at the strongest signal strength possible, depending on where you are in your house. Through my testing, I found the scenario of when it switches is usually when the phone has been kind of in standby for a while. Like let's say if I am downstairs near this router or whatever, my phone for whatever reason is connected to my main router. I go upstairs, go to sleep, wake up the next day, turn on my phone uh, or you know, look at my phone. I guess it never turns off. Uh, that's when it reconnects and it seems to reconnect to the new access point. Whereas uh, what I would hope that it would do is that if I walk from one end to the, uh, of the house to the other, it would switch automatically. But because this isn't a dedicated access points with those you know, Wi-Fi roaming built in, I don't think it's gonna be as seamless as I would have hoped for. Uh, but it does technically still work. It's kind of one of those things I'm going to keep playing with because it is kind of interesting. The answers that I'm finding on the internet is basically telling me that I need a little bit more of a professional uh, access point setup uh, or hardware in order to get that seamless roaming. Um, but again, kind of swinging back to what I said before, I don't really need the extra signal. The routers that I have work pretty damn good for what I need it for. This is more of just a curiosity thing. So, but that's pretty much it for today. Um, that basically covers what I did and how I turned this into an access point. I know it's not like a tutorial or how to, just kind of a curious little project, project that I wanted to do and show you what I was doing. So I have confirmed, yes, it is easy to set up third-party firmware on the Linksys uh, WRT series, 1900s or, or the ACS series. And, um, it is fairly simple to set up an access point as well. I mean, you just go in and plug in a few settings and you're good to go. So to get Wi-Fi roaming working on it, that's kind of a different story, but I'm gonna continue to mess with that. I might even make a video if I do get it figured out or you know get a definite answer. If you have you know comments on that or experience with that, definitely let me know down below. Um, this is an ongoing project for me. It's just kind of a side project and interest thing. So, you know, hey, if you have some feedback, I'd love to hear it. But anyways, guys, like and subscribe below. Thank you for watching and have a great day.